All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Harakakwadash. A double honor is unto the elders and apostles of GMS Great Millstone. And a sincere Shalom to Yaakim bringing out this word in diligence and in truth. Hey, now, uh, this lesson comes from the inspiration of uh, Elder Apostle uh, Ramlav's live stream that happened today. Um, it was a portion of it that I recorded it. Um, and he was speaking about how basically, a, um, you know, the Most High... He looks at at the elect, you know, Lord willing we be those men. He threw like shades. He was speaking of it like uh, in a figurative sense. He looks at the the elect as the as the um, through shades of like Yahweh Shai, and I'm gonna let him. I'm gonna let him say it. Right, and, and that's the same reason as to why only the elect are going to be saved, man. Because a hey, when you look at the the deeds of the rest of the nation of Israel, understanding that back, you know, when the Lord dealt with us, you know, um, as a nation, you know, it was for all of Israel. A hey, but now that that has been done away with, right? He's now focused on the elect of the nation of Israel, right? Because the blood of Yahweh Shai doesn't cover. Everybody on this side. It only covers the elect. That's why the scripture says in the book of Second Edges, the 16th chapter, in the 65th verse, their sins are going to be their accusers in this day. Speaking of the, the rest of the nation of Israel, the two-thirds, right? Because they're not purged, they're not washed, you know, they're still filthy. So they have to they have that hard reset, which comes from the second death, that thermonuclear fire, man. Right? And I want to just go through precepts, you know, to, to bring forth, you know, that it's only for the elect, man. And it's through Yahweh Shai that the elect even have a chance, right? This is Wisdom of Solomon 7 and verse 28. Um, it says, for Yahweh loveth none but him that dwelleth with wisdom, right? And that wisdom is only given unto a specific group elite men, right? And how do we know that? When we go into Ezekiel, the 37 chapter. I'm going to grab it so I can. This is Ezekiel 37. And, um... Here we go. This is Ezekiel 37 and 7. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them. And the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Right. So it's showing a, the nation of Israel as, a, as, a, um, as their dry bones. Right. And those with the sinews in the flesh are those who know that they're Israel, hey, but they don't have the breath within them, right? Which means what? That wisdom, as the scripture says, hey, is not in all of Israel. It's only in a specific, uh, um, what you call it, a specific predestined number of men, right? And we're going to keep reading. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to that in Wisdom of Solomon. It says, um, but there was no breath in them. And he said unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy unto man, and say to the wind, Thus saith Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Right? So when we go back into the book of Wisdom of Solomon, the seventh chapter, right, it speaks about what this breath is. For she is more moving than any motion. Here we go. Wisdom of Solomon 7 and 24. For wisdom is more moving than any motion. She passeth and goeth through all things by reason of her pureness. For she is the breath of the power of Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, and a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Therefore can no defiled thing fall into her. Right? So that's the separation between a those that are really alive, quickened by the what? Because quicken means to be made alive by the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Shai versus those who just know, right? And those who just know are in the same category that, that those who don't know. Because a two-third is a two-third. There, there's levels to it. You know, you have two-thirds who just know that they're Israelites, but it stops there. And then you have Jake who fans the hand, who are two-thirds as well. But the Lord specifically is looking upon 
the the ones he cares about through the lens of Yahweh Shai, man. Right? That that shades as the as a, as apostle, you know, gave the the figurative um, you know, um what you call it, the figurative description of, right? Now let's go more into it because there's more precepts supporting um whom the Lord cares about. And it's not the whole nation. This is Romans 9 and verse 27. It says, His eyes also crieth concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. Right? And that remnant is going to be saved through what? Through the blood of Yahweh Shai. Right? Because the blood covers them. A meaning what? A, their sins are, are atoned for. Because Yahweh Shai was what? The last sacrifice. The perfect sacrifice, the lamb without blemish, right? So it says, Isaiah also cried concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant. Matter of fact, I want to go to the blue letter, go into that word remnant. We know it means the elect, but I just want to see what it says. Let's see, for the word remnant. The word is <clears throat> hypolemia, hypolemema, lemma. A remnant remains, a remainder, a few, right? The Lord is is to, uh, you know, Israel to a little sanctuary, you know, for a small group, elite number of men. To reserve... It says where it is equivalent to a few, a small part. Um, let's see if it's any more. Matter of fact, let's do this. Yes, and it comes from what? Isaiah 10 and 22. But I want to see if it's uh, more. So lock in. Yeah, here we go. Romans 11 and 4. It says, um, But what said the answer of Yahweh unto him? I reserve to myself 7,000 men, a complete number, which is really 144,000, right? And the one third, who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so then at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace and that election is through predestination that's why uh, in the book of isaiah it says before i formed thee in the belly i knew thee right yeah you were chosen from the foundations of of the earth it says and if by grace then it is no more of works otherwise grace is no more grace but if it be of works then there's no more grace otherwise work is no more work what then israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for but the election have obtained it and the rest we're blinded, and thus whose uh, eyes the Lord is opening, and ears whose he's opening, man. Right? Matter of fact, I started. Yeah, that's the point. Um, I know I looked at Isaiah 10 and 22, but I want to read 10 and 20. Right? It says, And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel, and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob, shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but shall stay upon the Holy One. It's like, shall stay upon the Lord, Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel in truth. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty power, Yahweh. And that's through the, the, the education, you know. I believe the word is edukare, you know, to draw from within, right? And we were removed, and now the scripture says, what, seek him yet ten times more, right? And that's what's happening from the elect. You know, the rest of the world of Israel, you know, are fanning the hand or scoffing, talking shit. Hey, but they don't understand that they're not covered. Because the Lord is going to hey, bring forth pure judgment on them through Yahweh Shai. That's the separation. You're going to have judgment from uh from Yahweh Shai and then you're going to have salvation from Yahweh Shai, man. And the two thirds, as the scriptures say, they are unable to make it. They were predestined for that destruction. This is Zechariah 13 and 8, and it reads, And it shall come to pass that in all the land saith Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, 
two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire and we will find them as silver is refined. So there goes a the purging of impurities in order to be that, that, that pure vessel, right? It says, and we'll try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name. And that's another thing a uh, apostle Ramlab was going into uh, that as well on his live stream. How you have uh, all these Israelite camps who are basically a uh, saying, you don't have to call upon the names of Yahweh Bashim Shai, man. You can call them anything you want. This is a separation of those that have that breath versus those who, who don't. If they're telling you you don't need to call upon the names of Yahweh Bashim Shai, they are not men of the Lord, man. There is no other na name under heaven whereby men call that you must be saved, man. You want your woman to call you by your name. Why, why wouldn't the Heavenly Father and His Son? Hey, we, we are seeing that's another thing going into the betrothal. Hey, when a, a woman is betrothed unto a man, that man whom she's given unto, that's the only man that, th that she knows. Them calling upon another name shows that they don't know or that they're committing adultery with another man, man. We only know one man. And that's Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. It's like a Yahweh Shai. Right? That's one man. Ownership. They're calling upon all these different gods. So, so who are you going to call in the time uh, in which you need defense? Jake is out here playing. Hey, but that's unto their destruction, man. Hey, the, the wicked is going to be wicked still, as the scripture says. It says, um, they shall call on my name. And I will hear them. I will say, it is my people. They shall say, the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is my power. And that's the point, man. And we, we know where our strength cometh from. This is uh, 1 John 5. And uh, verse 7. And it reads. Um, it's like, I don't think it's 1 John 1. It's like, I said 1 John 5. 1 John 1 and 5 says, this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that the Most High is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Right. Hence, John, the third chapter. Hey, they can't walk in the light because their deeds are evil. They don't want to be reproved. Paraphrasing, man. Right. It says six. If we say. That we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Yahweh Shai, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Right? And that's only for the elect. Because the scripture tells you in the book of Daniel, right? It's Daniel 12, um, and I'm just read at the top. It says, and at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince who standeth for the children of thy people, Israel, the elect of Israel, though, right? Because the two thirds, they're going to, um, the scourges were made for them, right? All the scourges were made for the, the two thirds. It says, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Every one that shall be found written in the book and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to everlasting shame and contempt. Right. And that shame and contempt, the two thirds are going to have that that portion. That's their lot. Right. But the everlasting life, the everlasting name, name being found written in the Lamb's book of life. That's for the elect. Right. Showing forth another difference between the vessels of honor versus the vessels of dishonor. Not every, every Israelite is not going to be crowned by Yahweh Shai in the kingdom. That crowning ceremony spoken of in the book of Second Edges, that's only for the elect. Right? Whom a Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, it's like it, whom Yahweh was looking at through the, the shades, going back to the, the, the figurative lang language and the example that Apostle Ramah was speaking on, right? Whom Yahweh was looking through the shades of Yahweh Shai for those uh, allotted men. As for the rest of Israel, hey, they're going to be fine in the kingdom, but that's after death by pain. That's after thermonuclear destruction. That's after uh, or before thermonuclear destruction. You know, you got famine, you got pestilence, you got newly created creatures, you got race riots. These are all going to be the ways in which, you know, the two thirds of the nation of Israel are going to be destroyed. And then those that make it into the missiles, 
they're going to have to taste of that second death, man. Right? But hey, we, we have the, the grace and the faith in Yahweh Bashim Shai because of the, the life Yahweh Shai lived when he was upon the earth, man. And that's the reason we even have a chance. And here it is, we're telling you so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And, and, and with us being on the highways and hedges, that's the Lord's mercy going out. And here it is, you just, hey, telling the, you just basically putting it off. The scripture tell you not to put off the day of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Hey, but so be it, you know. Um, you know, that was pretty much the lesson. You know, uh, it was the spirit uh, that Apostle uh, Ramlab was going into when I heard that. You know, I just had to save the clip and bring forth a lesson. Hey, but Lord willing, it was edifying. I want to give all praise, glory, and honor unto Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Harakakwadash. A double honor is unto the elders and apostles of GMS Great Millstone. And a sincere shalom to Yaki and bringing out this word in diligence and in truth. Shalom.